Welcome everybody to Narcology 101, where we study the effects of narcissist abuse and how we heal from it. I am Sean Lehman. I am a narcissist abuse survivor. Today it's kind of surreal, and I come to you guys with a heavy heart. Um, I got a call on Friday uh, while I was at work uh, from my my father, and um, I thought he had maybe you know misdialed or it hit my number by accident, and. Um, he left a voicemail and asked, asked me to come over emergency. It was an emergency. And, um, so I went over there and, uh, I walk in and, um, um, the EMTs and, um, uh, uh, the medical team were trying to keep my mom, uh, alive. Um, they were doing CPR and, um, the lead EMT told me that they had been doing that for about 50 minutes. Um, and, uh, anyway, um, um, and, and they only did that as a courtesy for my father. And, uh, so at the one hour mark, um, my dad and I had to make the decision for them to stop working on my mom and, um, uh, and let her pass. And so, um, I don't know where this video is going to go. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. And I was thinking about, you know, when she passed, it's crazy because the first thing that came to my mind was how when I uh, divorced the narcissist and had her move out, she uh, went behind my back and, and gave a sad story to my mom about um, how I was putting her out. She had no food, no money or whatnot. Now, this is after she got thirty eight hundred dollars back in taxes for her daughter. So she was sitting on she was sitting on money. And uh, suckered my mom out of fifteen hundred dollars, and uh, and then proceeded to uh, tell me how how much I had uh, she was out and how much she had to spend on this apartment, and the whole time, you know, my mom would pay for everything. And I was thinking about you know just what dirty rotten pieces of shit these people are, uh, and how they'll exploit and and take advantage of uh, anyone and everyone, and uh, you know. I've been talking to some people who are dealing with, you know, uh, and reading comments about, you know, how they're in so much pain and, and in so much confusion. And, and a lot of it has to do with the shock that our bodies go through, you know, the, the, our brains and the chemicals that are released when we're in a, uh, constant toxic relationship. And, and it's just our bodies readjusting, uh, trying to come, come down off the emotional high that we were on while we were with these people. And, um, you know, one of the things that makes it difficult as we get older, because I looked at this, uh, I was looking at this diagram on who watches the channel and it's predominantly female and it ranges from the ages of 30, 35 to all the way up to 70. And, and, I'm, and I remember thinking it gets harder the older you get, you know, uh, a narcissist will, and I did it, my last video was on the aging narcissist and if you noticed, um, you know, they have to go after younger people to make themselves still feel desirable. Um, and they go after people that are close to them in proximity. So um, work is a, is a primary place for them to go, go to uh, the person I'm seeing. She was with uh, a narcissist uh, who was dating two, two people at the same place that they both worked. Um, and she found out after the, after the fact, because one of the things that she struggled with was feeling stupid, you know, because when we go through this and we, and, and in the end, and we find out all this stuff, you know, we feel, we feel like idiots for staying with these people. No, because we cared, we loved, and we gave our all to that relationship because we don't give up. But at some point you've got to give up. You have got to choose you and walk the hell away from these demons, these monsters that are only looking to strip you of everything good and everything pure that's about you. And I'm not saying all impasse. We're not perfect. You know, we're not perfect. I'm still controlling. and I still have insecurities. Um, I still uh, struggle with patience and tolerance and you know, I still have defects that are, you know, are active and, um, you know, shortcomings that are active. You know, I don't want to stand up here and act like I'm some saint because I'm not. Um, but I do know that I have a good heart and I do know that I try to love people uh, and care about people. But, 
you know, that's another thing that people struggle with when they get out of a relationship with a narcissist is like, you know, I don't trust anybody. I was reading something where all these people were commenting about, I don't trust anybody. I think everybody's a narcissist. Well, you, your judgment's clouded. Not everybody's a narcissist. Do we attract them? Yeah, of course we do. You know, it was like a moth to a flame. You know, they, 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 they're drawn to our goodness and they're drawn to our energy and, um, the things that they're attracted to initially are the things that they want to destroy us for uh, once they realize they can't strip it away from it and they can't steal it from us. Um, but I was also thinking about, you know, uh, people who, who sit there and, and, and w they want to know and they're like, when does the pain go away or when does the hurt go away or when am I going to feel better? Well, you're going to feel better when you start to work on you, when you start to self-reflect when you start to work on your childhood issues, when you start to uh, do positive things uh, like exercise or um, some extracurricular activity, when you get out of self, because I'm reminded of when I, when I was first going through this, I couldn't stop talking about the pain. It was all about me. It was all about me and my hurt and my pain. And the best way to get out of self and get out of that pain is to make it about somebody else, you know? Um, and you know, I'm reminded of, you know, of being there for my mom, being there for my dad. Um, I did a video on, you know, um, the family dynamics and how a lot of us were raised by, you know, narcissistic parents. And I told you that, you know, my mom was the vulnerable narcissist, um, and, and, you know, I had done a video, uh, I can't remember when it's been, it's been some months ago and was talking about, and I was, I was on one. I was like, if your narcs never cheated on you, you write, you know, you type in the comments and all that stuff. And somebody had said, not, not all narcs are, are not all narcs cheat. And, you know, he's, he's right. Vulnerable narcs don't cheat. What they do is they'll spend money, uh, or they'll see therapists or doctors, uh, my mom was notorious for seeing doctors and therapists. Um, and when they didn't tell her what she wanted to hear, then she'd get mad. She'd go to another one. But you got to remember though, when you're seeing a doctor, or you're seeing a therapist, it's one-on-one -on -one and it's all about you. It's all about you. And she was seeing a doctor or a therapist every single day, you know? And, uh, so she was getting her needs met. I was a supply to my mom too. But I also was reminded when she passed away on Friday, I was also reminded of you know, she also loved me the best she could, you know, and she did a lot of nice things for me when I was a kid. And, um, you know, she's helped my brother and I out, um, financially. Um, she's, she was there for us and she loved her kids and she loved her family. She loved her grandkids. And it was like, felt like one of those situations where I was like, you know, when you're a kid, it's like, you go, you go play with your friends and you start talking about your mom because she said something that angered you or told you to come in at a certain time and you didn't agree with it. It was okay for you to say something bad about your mom, but God help the kid that says something bad about your mom or agreed with you. You know, it's and it felt like one of those situations. It was like, you know, I felt justified in my anger towards her, but when she was gone, it was like, I realized, you know, I really, you know, I loved my mom. I did love my mom. And she had my back the best she could. She really did. Even though she was a vulnerable narcissist and even though my dad's a grandiose narcissist, you know, and, and I'm going to go over there today and help him and, and uh, you know, in any way I can. Um, and that kind of goes along with that aging narcissist. You know, uh, they hated each other. My mom and dad hated each other. Um, but they were all each other had, you know, and they'd been together 56 years. Uh, my mom was always... Uh, notorious for telling everybody she's been married 56 years, but she would leave out the hating part. She would leave out that part. And uh, again, kind of going back to, you know, part of the reason why this hurts is when you're in your forties or fifties or sixties and above, and somebody leaves you and discards you for somebody else. It's not like being 19, 20, 21, where you can bounce back and you look great and feel great and you can bounce back and find somebody else because the truth of the matter is when you heal and you get better, you should move on. We aren't meant to live alone. We aren't meant to live alone. 
and you find somebody else and that narcissist finds out you found, you found somebody else, they'll leave you alone. You want to get rid of a narcissist? Get with somebody else after you heal. After you heal, not before. After you've healed, after you've had some alone time and you get with somebody else, they will leave you alone. You know why? Because they are lazy, good for nothing pieces of shit. And they're not going to work to try to reclaim you. They're not going to work for it. They're not going to try to love bomb you and talk you out of it. They're not going to, they will leave you alone once you've moved on. They're lazy. Mine left me for somebody at work. The worst possible place to meet somebody. I mean, that's, that's, that's business 101. Don't get involved with somebody at work. But they do it because they're lazy and they don't, they don't want to put forth the effort. Think about it. When they were with you, they were lazy. You did all the loving, all the caring, all the bill paying, all of that stuff. And they gave no effort. All they did was criticize and judge and belittle and devalue. That's all they did was rip you to shreds because they were jealous of you, because you were responsible, because you were caring, because because you knew how to make it about somebody else other than themselves. And remember, they're paranoid. Uh, and they always think that people are thinking what they're thinking. And their and, and they're twisted motives. See, a narc's motives are all wicked and screwed up. And they think other people have motives too. And this notion, you know, somebody said, uh, I heard somebody say something about, well, they, they cheat on us first because they think you're gonna cheat on. No, they cheat because they're evil. There is nothing in life that will hurt somebody else more than cheating on them. It is the ultimate betrayal. It is the ultimate form of disrespect. How are you going? If you cheat on somebody, you're telling them that you no longer value them. They don't mean anything that uh, you somehow uh, you somehow they don't they don't provide everything that you need and you need to you need to step out and get it from somebody else. I mean, it sends all the wrong messages. And, and on top of it, it's just hurtful. It's hurtful. But a narc likes hurting good people because they hurt. They're miserable. You know, I used to hear people say, well, their own existence is their misery. And, um, and in the beginning, I was like, I don't give a shit. I want to see her go through the windshield of a car. I want to I want to hear about her getting hit by a bus. I thought all kind of stuff I will not share on a video. I thought some heinous stuff that I wanted to happen to that narc because in my mind, she got away with murder. She got away with spiritual, emotional and mental murder. And all the while she's dogging, you know, that's, that's what they do. They dog us out to everybody else. So when it ends and they know it's going to end, we look like the bad guys and our word no longer holds credibility. So that smear campaign, and I told you, you know, and I, I read and hear stuff about that too. They're like, well, if you ghost a narc, then they start to smear you. No, 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 no. They smear it from the beginning. They know there's an expiration date. They got to get ahead of it and they smear you from day one. Anything and everything that they can find out about you, they are running around telling everybody that they can. Everybody. And so I found out she spent two and a half years in jail. She's been arrested multiple times. She's got multiple uh, collection agencies. She's getting her, her wages garnished where she's at now in her little dump dump a factory that she works at that some uh, manpower placed her at and the new supply the hell he's not even new anymore the the other supply he has no idea what he brought into his home he has no well he probably does now he probably does now and and wondering what happened what happened how did I, how did I let this happen? How did I let this person? And she got evicted from her apartment because that's what she, that's what she did with me. She was in an apartment, but she stayed with me the whole time. 
but because it was her daughter's friend that, that got allowed her to have the apartment, she paid it off. Well, she didn't have that same family tie with this one, so she got evicted. And now that new supplier is probably like, God, I'd like to get rid of her. But now I feel guilty because she has nowhere to go. You, you see how they you see how they strategically manipulate us and play on our emotions and play on our our our, uh, our sympathy and our empathy. They play on our good qualities. Do you think they would do for you what you did for them? No, hell no. And just the fact that they've moved on to somebody else. But see. But see, a narc, that's that's how insidious these these pricks are. The narc won't leave you alone. You have to cut off all ties. You have to block and 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 make sure that you're you are uh, you are unapproachable or unattainable, unreachable. You have to do that. And the male narc, the male narc, hell, they use their intimidation, they use their their physical prowess. They intimidate, they threaten. Male narcs are just as dangerous as female narcs. If they've got narc before their name, they're they're evil. They're they're dangerous. But they come off as charming. And 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 so someone had mentioned, like, hey, how do I know if the next person I get into a relationship is a narc? Measure how fast they try to get into a relationship with you. Go back to the beginning. Remember how quickly and how rushed that relationship was? how they wanted to, to love bomb you and, and tell you all these wonderful things. You know, these wonderful things that takes months, sometimes years to realize about somebody. They're trying to tell you that in the first first week. You're their soulmate and you're, you're the person that, that God had intended them to be. No, no. Relationships are built over a period of time. Relationships take take months and years to evolve and get to know somebody and get to know uh, their their ins and their outs their likes their dislikes but in art they study us they mimic us they mirror us and they make us think that oh my god i found the right one no you found you found the devil you found the devil so anybody out there that's still thinking about going back and and um, you know trying to reach back out to the narcissist just stop take a deep breath and remember what they put you through it's only going to get worse it does not get better and that grace and mercy that god gave you to give you the information that you were with the narcissist and and got you out of that situation that that grace and mercy is going to be pulled back and it is only going to hurt worse and be worse for you if you continue to reach back out to them trying to um Make the person that broke you put you back together. You see how that doesn't make sense? But see, most of us that the narc takes advantage of, we're emotional. We're feelers. We have big emotions. And we're easily manipulated by those emotions. And they know that. And all the while, they're hoping we, we forgive and forget. So we'll, we'll invite them back in. But it's like inviting the devil back into your house. Don't do it. Don't do it. Hey, listen, I uh, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for all my new subscribers and and uh, uh, people who, who've taken the time to listen. Uh, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notification. But most importantly, like I said, I'm a feeler. I like to talk. I like to communicate with people. Please, in the comment section, and this is for the benefit of other people who see this video, Please tell your experience, strength, and hope behind going back to the narcissist. Because we all have done it. I mean, hell, they said an average of seven to ten times before you break away completely. Talk about your experiences in the comments section. Talk about your experiences of going back to the narcissist and what happened. A gentleman by the name of Avery, who's in the other, uh, who's commented in the other videos, he talked about it. He talked about what hell he went through. So please make sure that you, uh, in the comment section. Talk about your experiences going back so other people can read it, can find validation, can um, find a connection and, and hopefully find, you know, some direction on how to how to get away. Not only what happened when you went back, but what your life's like now 
that you're away from the narcissist, okay? This is about giving people hope. This is about giving people um, a sense of, of, of um, freedom and, and, um, and peace. That's what we're about here, okay? Uh, my site was supposed to be launched Friday, but the person who created the site also lost her mother on the same day. So it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a little bit, I guess, before that gets launched. But if you want to get a hold of me, my email and uh, Instagram uh, will be at the bottom. So God bless. Um, I hope you have a great Sunday and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. I hope you have a good day.